it. So we're going to have a look at anatomy of the knee and the best position to put the knee into in order to palpate. And this is a precursor for the other testing observations we're going to do and eventually special tests. So if we look at the knee in extension and just have a look at the skeletal structures alongside it, um, I know we've got left and right knee here, but um, one can see straight away that with the knee locked out and the two femoral condyles in close contact with the tibial plateau there, it's really quite difficult to separate the various structures. Much easier if we flex the knee like so and open up the joint so that we can feel the individual structures. So, with the knee flexed, if we just feel, first of all, there's the tibia, we can feel the ridge down the front there, there's the flat edge on the anteromedial aspect, we can feel round this side the anterior compartment, and you can squeeze that muscular compartment there. As we come up, should be able to feel just a slight bony prominence there, um, and that's the tibial tubercle. You can feel that's quite hard. As we go above that, we go on to the patella tendon, and with the knee flexed, it's slightly on stretch, and so we've got a little bit of springiness to that. If you palpate either side of that, and push in towards what we call the eyes of the knee with the joint opened up. Um, here you can feel slightly different soft tissue, and these are known as the patella fat pads, which help in protecting the open joint. Here we can see and actually palpate the triangular shape of the patella with the inferior pole facing down towards the tibia and of course here is where the patella tendon attaches. Above that will be the suprapatella tendon and that of course will spread out into the quadriceps. If we feel around various other structures, I'll look across here if I just run my figure around there, that's the top of the tibial plateau. And so here I can feel at the front, the anterior surfaces, all the bony structure as the tibia comes up and sort of widens out to that flat shelf. Then we can feel the edge of that, and then just above that, these are the hollows, or as we said earlier, the eyes of the knee. If we push in directly towards the femur, here is the shape of the two femoral condyles and we're pushing in on the articular surfaces which are now exposed. So when the knee comes back into extension, these surfaces articulate with the top of the tibial plateau. So although that's fairly flat, there are two sort of concave surfaces to accommodate uh, the two femoral condyles. And in this position, the two menisci have receded backwards to accommodate the shape of the two femoral condyles in contact. So if we just show this on the model uh, either side here, and the subject's got left leg flexed, so this is the same, here's the lateral aspect with the head of the fibula. If we flex the knee, we can see the two colored surfaces there of the femoral condyles, and here we can see the two menisci um, if we just angle that forwards, you can see the semilunar shapes of each one. And these, of course, are made of fibre cartilage, and their shape naturally accommodates these two spherical shapes here. In terms of what the joint is called, or the classification of joint, we often refer to it as a hinge joint. Uh, a better or more appropriate name for it is a double condyloid. So although it does hinge, it also glides and it rotates, it pivots. So double condyloid, obviously referring to these two spherical shapes and how they can rotate around these structures. Deep inside there, you can see the two cruciate ligaments, the anterior angling upwards and backwards, and then at the back, the posterior cruciate ligament. And these, of course, prevent anterior and posterior shift of the tibia as well as preventing or helping prevent rotational movements. So if we put that back into position, put that down for a moment. Again, just coming back to palpating. The medial aspect we said there was the tibia. If we squeeze up the lateral aspect, this is the easiest way of finding the head of the fibula. 
Um, if we try and palpate around the knee, there are lots of other bony structures um, and it's easy to mistake um, being on that head of the fibula. If you squeeze your way up the lateral aspect, all of this will be muscle in the lateral compartment and the first bony prominence that you find has to be the head of the fibula. Above that, with the knee flexed, there are soft tissues there, but they're in a fairly relaxed uh, or non-stressed state. Uh, attaching into the head of the fibula, you will have the biceps femoris tendon and also the lateral collateral ligament. From the side, we can feel the shape of each femoral condyle. So I can feel around here, I can just mark out with my finger that sort of spherical shape again, um, but it's a different feel to it because this bony surface is not articulating with anything. So there's a certain roughness to that, whereas around the front, you can feel the smoothness of the articular cartilage. And then of course the same around the medial aspect with the medial femoral condyle. There. We just put the knee back into extension for a moment. Other important structures that you would feel around this, as well as the bony structures, would be of course the quadriceps. If we just ask our client to contract the quadriceps, you can straight away see the shape of vastus medialis there, lateralis here, down the central channel there will be the rectus femoris and of course underneath that intermedius. At this stage we can also just feel around the patella and if necessary we can just push the patella sideways and just again get a feel for the articular cartilage on the underside. You'll notice that most of the palpation is done from the anterior surface because if we to turn our client over into a prone position and feel around the back most of what we feel in that position is going to be muscular with the hamstrings, the heads of the gastric venous and so on. All the skeletal structures are too deep to be able to get to. So most of what we need is, is found from here. I think that's it for our overview of functional anatomy. Breathe.